Good afternoon everyone, this is John again coming at you with another Gunpla review of the 1 to 144 High Grid Hyakuri. Now I do apologize for taking so long to make this video. And also, now we're thinking about the video, let's cut, um, as you can see, I've uh, upgraded a little bit. I finally got an awesome backdrop. So if I my hands look a little weird, if like I bang into something, that's because this is a totally new different desk. Technically it's a little shell. But anyways, let's go on with the video. So yeah, once again, I apologize for taking so long to make this video. I've been wanting to top coat her, and I reason why I say that she's her because it's piloted by uh, laughter. But um, yeah, here in Texas, especially during the summer, when it's nice six degrees, uh, yeah, it's definitely not gonna happen outside, especially when you have a good amount of room in your garage to spray. So unfortunately, I do have nothing. I have nothing else but to spray outside. So that's gonna give me obviously some limitations during the summer. But anyways, I finally risked it. She did okay. Uh, I don't see any frost whatsoever. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's technically go on with this review. All right guys, so obviously as you see in the turning table, I did a ton of panel lying. I'm not too sure. Yeah, you can't really see on the top of the backpack, but there's gonna be an insane amount of panel lying on that backpack right there. Overall, you can see I use some brown panel lying marker for the light tan colors. Uh, some black panel lining marker for the more darker-ish like mud colors right here. And then all, all the dressers right here, all the white parts basically, I used gray panel lining marker just to do the perfect color tone and all that stuff. Uh, okay, and also some uh, painted some missing color apps except these. These were actually supposed to be that tannish white, but I decided not to do it. I think they look gray. Uh, just the way they are. I did some black on the bottom thrusters right here. I'll give you a better uh, view if you didn't see that. And I uh, also did these white pipings right here that were originally gray. And the eyes. I also painted the eyes purple. Now in the manual, it says it should be a red color for the eyes. But I don't know about y'all, but I've always seen that the, the eyes were purple on the box art. It may be different in the anime. I'm not too sure if the eyes were red in the anime. But I saw purple, so I gave it the purple look and it came out terrific. Let's see, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If I didn't mention any panel line, y'all be able to see that throughout the review. I did use a couple of stickers, not that much, maybe just half the sheep. I used a gray sticker right here on the shoulder, and there's one on top right here that I'll show y'all once I pick them up. So, I think that's pretty much it for the little intro. With that in mind, let's go ahead and look at the articulation right here. All right, so we got the head. It is, my head actually is a bit messed up. As I was trying to remove this head right here in order to get a seam, seam line, well, but we'll also talk about seam lines, I popped it off, but at the end, basically, it's a little loose if you can see that. So, let me see if you can see that. Can you hear that? Yeah, it's a bit loose, so it's kind of just wiggling in there, but this little hood protects the head from basically popping off, as you can see. A little bit <laughs> but anyways the head obviously is restricted from any movement that's pretty much uh, all it's going to do like so once again excuse my hands if they're in the way I'm still trying to get used to this new layout okay and then with that in mind uh, twist the uh, waist right here it is limited as well due to these pipings right here these little piping sorry for that screech that was the turntable let me go ahead and take them off the stand shall I that's a bit it would be a lot better and he does come off a stand, but we'll discuss that later. <laughs> That's the accessories. Yeah, so his waist is hindered by the pipings right here. And the pipings, like all IBO kits, they're with pipings. Sometimes they're not all the way in, so yeah, you're going to have some a gap right there. But it's hardly noticeable. Just don't make sure to turn them to 360. But if anything, it can only go that much. It does have some up up and down movement but as you can see the ball joint because of how heavy the backpack is it may tilt over and basically it's gonna yeah it's gonna pop off as you can see right there so just be aware of that okay so with the shoulders once again they could go 360 if the backpack wasn't present so yeah but they could do a good 90 degree right here mm -hmm. and the arms right here they are gonna be double jointed really really nice Mm -hmm. And let me just discuss about these little these forearms. The forearms were so weird to build, and also kind of like bad gay placement. So there's gonna be some nub marks if you can see. But yeah, this tiny parts. I don't know about you. I thought it was it was. I guess I was having a bad day. I'm not too sure. But I don't know. The uh, forearms are a bit weird. Tiny parts, horrible seam line. Uh, not seam lines. Horrible nub marks and all that stuff. But speaking of the forearms, 
above it is going to be the wrists and these wrists are pretty tight which i really really love they're not going to break unless they're too stressed out so you may want to sand those if you want just to avoid breakage of those ball joints of the wrist but the wrists are pretty excellent highly detailed also panel line the wrist some of it did i panel line it yeah just a little bit if you can see right there on the knuckles it may be hard to see but yeah yeah so that's gonna be basically it for the arms let's see the waist the head yeah let's go over the legs real quick so legs can only go that much you can go up like that pretty good amount actually really good amount. look at that so really high articulation right there on the leg and then down, down right here i'll use it with your legs so it'll be a lot easier yeah could go like that as well because it doesn't have a skirt to block it basically as you can see Oh, by the way, I also painted this little thruster vent right here. It was originally that same brownish color by painting silver. And I panel lined it as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So that's really good hip articulation. And the knees are also double jointed as well. Really, really nice. Mm -hmm. This model has really good articulation. The foot, it's can't, it could do a little bit of wiggle wiggle, as you can see. And then it could do point straight down. Really good point uh, toe articulation for the little sp the, uh, how should I say hyperspace <laughs> speed mode that it has we'll discuss that later once again with transformations yep and I think that's gonna be pretty much it if there's any articulation on the backpack it's just gonna be these little flaps right here to protect the shoulders which are pretty cool little shoulder mounts armor things yeah pretty interesting I think they're well yeah the uh, sorry <laughs> the Hyakuri is such an interesting design I love how it has sharp aspects but it has these like curved aspects the little shows right here the head the chest armor right here just basically the signature turbines mobile suits yeah this model is super interesting it's so interesting it's good yeah so that's that's my personal opinion on it and speaking of the backpack i used the sticker right here actually I used two yeah i used two there's two right here one with the mud color and the white and one with the silver right here silver and gray if you can see the little foil sticker left some silver markings yeah <clears throat> i also use these right here the reason why i didn't paint it is because replicate replicating that color would be very difficult so that's what i did also i was laser right here i could paint these little uh, openings they're technically supposed to be openings according to the manual and instruction manual they're supposed to be black but i just decided to use the panel line marker and mediocre job but i think they did the right thing yeah also, you get some right here. If you can see, that is a lot of panel line that I did right here. So this model has no way near um, not having enough detail. Also, panel line the thrusters on the back right there as well. You can see, yeah, yeah. So all over, like I said, so much panel line. Let me see if you got a good view right there. So so much panel line. And I also topped this guy with flat coat. So yeah. Okay, with that in mind. He is able to stand only with uh, the stand from that was provided for him. <laughs> of course, those tiny feet aren't going to support this model, especially with the big backpack. And it's really tight connection on there, so just be careful. He may angle like this. The reason why is because you got to make sure the body is connected. Okay, so there's a peg right here. So yeah, you got to make sure this is securely plugged into the bottom. Also, you got to make sure that this guy isn't tilted, I think. Like that. Not tilted. You have to make sure he is nice and secure so he can get that upwards angle. You do stand, excuse me. We do have another connection, like so right here. This is for the hole right here. Now I am really nervous about this one, but let me just show it to you for demonstrating reasons. So you just plug it in like so, move it. Now I, I really don't know why anyone would want to pose him like this because yeah. Oh, there you go. Never mind. I lied. I forgot. <laughs> I obviously haven't really used this connection but basically what this one is for if the stance doesn't get right is for the hyakuri to stand up basically so as you can see let me get this thing rolling excuse the derby pose but yeah he is able to stand if only he has that so if you do like a little hanger pose if you have one of those hanger pieces from like the robot damashis you can use that in the background and do like a little um you know uh ship cargo uh hang the hanger like scene so yeah that's only that's the only way she is able to stand up so that's pretty cool how Bandai gave you two, um, well technically okay, one, uh, part to connect it to stand and also to be in flight mode. But of course this thing's going to be more in flight mode usually so right. Alright so with that being said, let's go over the accessories really quick. Let me go ahead and take them off right here. 
Okay, so for accessories, you get these awesome beam. Well, they're not really beam rifles, but of course, because I bought those, beam rifles. They are uh, little bit guns, little bit machine guns, I want to say, because the way they fire, they're kind of like uh, automatic rifles, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Now, I used a bunch of panel line marker with this, with black ink, black panel line gun marker, black panel line gun marker, that's what I used. And, um,. This right here, of course, is supposed to be like a little LED for the rifle. I decide, okay, so now that we're mentioning it, around here, all of this is all hollow, unfortunately. That you can fix with putty if you want, but yeah, that's gonna, that's nasty. But I'm a lazy guy at the moment, and I do have putty, I'll be, I'll be honest, but I haven't really practiced it with it yet. I'll practice it with another time because I really don't want to mess up this one. <laughs> I really love the Hyakuri, so. I think it looks fine just the way it is. But anyways, I painted the LED green testers, uh, green flake metallic. So I did that on this side too. Also painted the nozzle right here, the little barrel silver as well, just to give it a little um, color separation. I mm -hmm. also did that the same with this guy, mm -hmm. as you can see, flipping over. And this rifle actually does have articulation. So the handle could move just like so. And that's gonna be for the purpose of transformation. Mm -hmm. So, and also these little fins right here can move. These are little fins right here. Yeah. It's pretty cool, right? Pretty interesting. Just like so. Just trying to make sure y'all can see. Yep. Just like so. My only complaint about this rifle is that when the fins, like, collapse together, I wish they could, like, just stay put, like, very, very solid. But, unfortunately, it cannot. Yeah. You just got to open very, very slightly. But, yeah. That's my only complaint. But, this is really, really nice. Uh, detail on the rifle Okay, and it's cool Shika in order for her to hold them You don't have to take off the little hand guards in the back You can just be on they just slip on like so and they're holded nice and securely excuse me Yeah, very nice and secure You can get some awesome poses of these and these things look wonderful. I'll go ahead and do the pose like in the boxer. Yeah Very nicely articulated and this is gonna be her without her flight form and you just tilt her head like that. Yeah, so these rifles do look really, really nice, as you can see. And let me go ahead and slide for you, just to give you a little 360. Yep, really, really awesome view. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just like so. It gives the model, of course, some really, really awesome poses. And look to it. Okay, so going on to the inner accessory, we have, of course, these shields. They're also supposed to be connected to. <laughs> that was supposed to be connected to the back of the uh, backpack. Yeah, these, so these are really awesome. Uh, yeah, they're really awesome. I mean, I really don't want to put them on my Hiyakuri, right? I have them in the back to make it look fuller. But yeah, they're like little shovels, to be honest. I can see little sand shovels, little rakes. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And let me go ahead and put them on her. You could put the sh the shields on with the guns. Uh, let me see. Actually, I may be lying about that. So just give me a sec. Well, you kind of have to mess with it, first of all. If anything, that's the best you're going to get. But, yeah, I recommend it's recommended that you take off the rifle because you get this little little look to it. Unless you angle it with the, the, the handle that has articulation. I don't know. But it's basically supposed to be like this. And she does use them in the anime, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if she ever wants to protect herself, she can use it like so. Do a good post. Ah. Yeah, this connection is a little bit weird, as you can see. I mean, it fits right, but when putting it on the back of the elbow, it's kind of secure. You can't really tell. I don't want to break them, so yeah. So let me get hit. Sorry, like I said, I'm still trying to get used to the setup. Yeah. So that's basically how it looks. It looks. It looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're nice and long, nice and thick. Yeah, pretty nice. And also, you can also get some panel line right there as well. Nice panel lines. Mm -hmm. And also, it has two connections on the little shoulder connector. You get on the side of your arm, or you could get like the usual Gundam. See, two connectors right there. You're on the side or the bottom. So let me go ahead and do that for you right now. Just like so. Yeah, you do also get this nice little... There you go. 
that's basically the pose that she used while facing the pirates in the first season with Gush uh, Gushion, the original Gushion. Yeah, really nice looking. And the, the, the man roadies, space man roadies. Yeah, so that's the pose that you get with the shield. Mm -hmm. Okay, go this way. There you go, I'm gonna start doing that for now on. <laughs> yep, really, really nice. And that's pretty much all the accessories. You get the shields, you get the machine guns, you get the little connector for the stand. Of course, you also get the stand. And yeah, you connect it for the uh, shields. Okay, okay. So, let me go ahead and explain the transformation. This transformation is really, really cool. Although it's simple, it's it does it justice. So, let me go ahead. As you saw in the anime, she does her flight form. So, oh, also, now that I mentioned it, back to our articulation really quick. These pipes on the hips right here. They are not fully, they're not full. So basically when you're paneling it really, really wide, sometimes they may come out like so, as you can see. So yeah, just be careful. Make sure those things are secure in the little sockets. Yeah. And as you can see, the backpack is just too heavy. Sometimes she keeps on angling downwards. So you just always gotta make sure she's on that ball joint or unless you wanna coat that ball joint on the hip with glue. Maybe that'll secure a lot more. Okay, so for the transformation, she has her flight form. So first, what you want to do is you want to put the toes like this, like so. So it gives it that nice speedy look. Mm -hmm. And usually she is posed like this because it really wouldn't make sense if she's turned like moving like that. I don't know. I'm not, I've never piloted a plane. But anyways, yeah. And then what you want to do is get the arms straight across back right here. Make sure it is connected. Sorry for the stand. Let me take off the stand once again. Make sure it is connected to the back. And you want to get the wrist angled. Now, it's tough to get these wrists angled because of how secure they are. So, that's kind of like as best as I get if unless you want to take it out and mess with it. But for the sake of the review, I'll just leave it like so. And you go ahead and do that with the same arm. And this guy tends to pop off. So, that's just mine. It could be... Uh, it's just mine. It could... It could it doesn't, blah. It's just mine. Well, I don't know about anyone else's, but yeah, that's another complaint. But once again, you could coat, coat, bleh, coat that with glue. <laughs> Sorry for all the stuttering. My voice is getting dry. It's pretty hot, though, once again, here in Texas. And my room is pretty hot. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> then what you do is you go ahead and attach the shields to cover the front of the arms. Let me go do that for you real quick. Has little connectors right here. All you have to do is slide it in. Uh, now, it's only connected by... Uh, Actually, no. That's not what you do. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so the next, what you want to do is connect the guns. And the guns, let me put them down, have some really nice mechanical work. So what you want to do is, you want to, has it's connected to like a little hinge right here, as you can see. So you hear that snap? Yeah, it's pretty cool. But anyways, you just flip it like so. Then you also want to angle, depending on the side, since this one's going to be on the right, we angle it like so, like that, and we open up the fins. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah, it's like a little compact rifle now. It's pretty cool. I really, really like the look of this. So, what you want to do is simply put it in her hand. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to mess with it in order for it to actually fit. But for now, it is secure right there. Let's go ahead and top it off with a shield to secure it from falling off just like so nice click there you go that's pretty much it let me go ahead and get the other arm okay guys so that's gonna be the flight form it's a really nice look to the hyakuri i know the guns are a little bit pointing down but like i said the wrists are pretty tough so you just gotta mess with that on your free time but yeah it gives it a really really nice look it's not a robot anymore it just looks like a little plane a little thruster a little fire jet it's a really, really nice detail. I love how Bandai designed this Hyakuri. It is amazing. It's quite different. If you've built already too many Grazes and Gundam IBOs and you want to get a break from that, go ahead and build yourself a Turbines Mobile Suit. They are excellent. They are different. They are awesome. So yeah, I guess that's my final verdict for this one. And that's going to be pretty much it for the review. Also, I should mention Option part two. set two. Obviously, as you can see, the Hyakuri on top, you get this grenade launcher and you get the four missile launcher. I haven't built them yet, but if I'll do an unboxing of this later, about unboxing review. But they're pretty good sizes. They're actually really long. The pictures don't do it justice. Let me see if we can get a better view. But yeah, right there. 
And of course, all these accessories you could do on the Hyaku Rin, which I'm going to review very soon. I'm having the same issue where the weather is not that good. Hang on, with that one, it'll be out real soon. So yeah, you also do get the accessories. And this one only cost me a Hobby Town about $7.50, I think. Really good price. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and put them back on the box. Put them back right there. Alright. So yeah, guys. That's going to be pretty much it for this review. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know down below. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, like, and subscribe to my channel as well. And this video. Like to this video. Subscribe to my channel. Also, be sure to check out my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter for the latest updates on projects, uh, videos, and product hauls. So yeah, guys. That's going to be pretty much it. Once again, I highly recommend this model for only $10. That's what I got from it's definitely a need. Yeah, it is a need. If you haven't built a Terminus Mobile Suit, go ahead and build this one. All right, guys, that's gonna pretty much it. I'll see y'all in the next review. Thank you very much. To mention too is the seam lines. Sorry about that. So you get a nasty seam line right here. If you didn't know, it's already between the thighs. Yeah, unfortunately, you get a nasty seam line. You also get one right here on the legs that you can see right here. I'm really too sure we can see that. But yeah, right there where my ba bamboo skewer is pointing at. Yep, my meat skewer. Okay, let's see. You also do get some seam line right here on the hip. I know the shallot right here, if you can see that. The gun's in the way. Let me get that gun out the way. You also do get seam line in between right here. Mm -hmm. Where the end of the hip would be. Dang it again. Where the hip of the end would be at, if you can see that. Mm hmm. Let's see anywhere else. It's, you're going to have one right here on the shoulders. Of course, the sticker's covering it, so I think the sticker for that. But there's a little tip right here on the mud shoulder right here. Yeah, that's going to be a seam line as well. Let's see. The gun is a seam line too, right there. You can see right? It's kind of a seam line. It has a little risen like component to it, but it's, it's there. I don't know if you can really see it as well. And the saddest part about this molecule is the head. The head right here is a seam line, but I covered that up right here. Yeah, so it looks good now, but it's very noticeable if you don't uh, get rid of that seam line with some glue. <laughs> Excuse me, have it comes. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be pretty much it for the seam Sorry, lines. Sorry guys, I forgot to mention something else, something else of a missing color application. These little, uh, I guess, things right here, they're supposed to be gray. So it gives you that same gray right here. That's supposed to be gray as well. So yeah, just FYI. I decided to keep them because I really love the tan color. So just that's just me. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Finally, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll see y'all in the next video.